happy Wellness Wednesday. Uh, we talk a lot on this show and so far you know from our Monday where we were dealing with police misconduct and yesterday we were dealing with Supreme Court justices and the treatment of black women. So there are some heady subjects because frankly the news right now in the world is heavy. And even though we're keeping true to our promise, we want you to be able to come here where we make it make sense. Dialing down the rhetoric, dialing down the static and the noise and the bickering, and giving you the who, what, where, when, why of it. And when there is commentary, the commentary will be fact-driven, data-driven, and truthful. Those are my promises to you here at Make It Make Sense. But with everything that's going on and how heavy it is, it's important to me that we take at least one day out of the week uh, because I'm going to be here at noon daily. But I want to take at least one day and talk about our wellness, our, our health, so that we can be healthy mind, body, and spirit. Um, and I, I practice that for myself. I've had times in my life where wasn't doing that, that great at it, um, but I give myself grace now, doing better. Uh, and forgiving those times when I was not honoring my temple and honoring the, the one thing that God entrusts us with, which is our time that should be used for his purposes. Um, and in order to do that, we got to be well. And in order to be well, we need to know what's going on and how to take care of ourselves and our families. And I couldn't start a wellness or a wellness Wednesday, ignoring the gigantic issue that is still very much with our country and this world. As much as we want to forget about it, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Still, we are two years in and counting. So far, we have had, and I wanna get this number right because I, I don't want to ignore it or skip over it. In the United States alone, there have been 77 million cases and there have been 908,000 deaths. That's up to this very day. That data is from the New York Times and from our world in data. It was last updated 18 hours ago. Uh, 908,000. Close, close to a million people have died um, at the hands of COVID. And many of them, as we know, at least from the early days and the way that we were getting information, wholly unnecessarily. And what I'm hoping we can do uh, with the guest that I have today is give us the facts on where we are now, give us the best information about what we can do now, um, and make it so that we can have our marching orders um, and go forward with some amount of confidence. But as you can imagine, I got plenty of questions and I am being told that my guest is here. All he has to do is make a request. Oh, send but some hearts up on the screen um, that we are joined by Dr. Georgia C. Benjamin. I can't, um, we don't even have enough time at this point for me to go through all of his accomplishments and educational attributes and et cetera and so on. He's currently, if I'm right, you're currently still the executive director, Dr. Benjamin? I, I am. And just for, so, look, I'm a doc and I'm from Chicago. I'm from the hood. It, well, that's what he's going to have a chance to tell you. But I'm going to say he's the executive director of the American Public Health Association. He's a medical doctor. He really is, um, just from my research, um, an experienced leader who, to me, blends the right things because especially coming from the law, I know every lawyer is not a manager. And every manager is not a lawyer. So when you find people who can lead and pursue leadership models and also be in their trained discipline, then you're getting the best of both worlds. And that is what we are getting in Dr. Benjamin. Um, I really want to, because as I said um, before the break the last time, what we're doing with Make It Make Sense is trying to break down um, complex topics 
so that they can be understood. And Dr. Benjamin, not if you're still with me, because it looks like you might be frozen. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm good. And yeah. we are trying to, for real, make them make sense. Uh, because I watch on the news and it just seems like people are talking at each other, not to each other. And we're not getting through the who, what, where, when, why before those conversations. And that led me to do this. So we want to have fact-driven, data-driven. We believe the science over here, Dr. Benjamin. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know about all my followers, but I want to at least represent the ones who don't want to do their own research concerning a worldwide pandemic where all the smart people can't even agree. So we want to lean on you because medicine is not my training. My, my grandfather graduated from Mary Medical School. But that is where the line stopped on medicine in our family, <laughs> maybe to be picked up by my children. Um, but I said earlier, when I was thinking about a Wellness Wednesday, and with all these heady topics we deal with, a way for everyone to be healthy, mind, body, and spirit, to take a break in the middle of the week and kind of focus in uh, so that we can live, so that we can live really. Uh, and, and we can't do that without starting with the fact that we're still in a pandemic, even though people want to maybe act like we're not. Um, when I checked, it was 908,000 deaths. I know that number's climbing because that was from the New York Times, you know, 18, mm -hmm. 24 hours ago, um, 77 million plus um, cases of COVID. So for those who have died, almost a million who have died, that's touching mother, father, brother, sister, children, that's grandchildren, right. workplaces. Um, the, the, the reach for absorbing loss and grief like that and absorbing the practicalities of loss of economy like that and absorbing um, just really the sheer numbers of what it means for a country to, in my opinion, unnecessarily go through that. And then when you look at the 77 million, for the conditions, the health challenges that go with having had a serious bout with COVID for those who did, and the fact that they may have to deal with that the rest of their lives. So first, I wanna get with you to the what, when, where of it. We're going to deal with some why before, because I know, you, I, know, I know you have some things to say about the why. But in the who, what, where, where are we now? My questions are mask, no mask, um, vaccine plus vaccine or no, boost or not, children or not. Like based on the CDC guidance and, and what you do, what is it that we should be doing right now? Look, I, I think the most important thing for all of us to do is get vaccinated. If you haven't been vaccinated yet, um, you're letting yourself down. Now, you know, these vaccines are safe and effective. And what I mean, when I say effective, what I mean is they prevent you from doing the most important thing. That means getting really sick and dying. They're okay. very, very good at that. Um, vaccines can also prevent you from infecting um, other people are getting infected yourself, but they're not as good at that by any means. And because of that, we're telling people right now to wear a mask because okay. this is a virus. It's a respiratory virus. Um, and it's, you know, because you're, when you talk or you sneeze or you laugh, you know, stuff comes out your mouth. <laughs> this virus, if you're, inf if you're infected, it comes out your mouth and you can infect other people. And the magic distance is about six feet. You know, when I'm talking to you and I'm expressing stuff out of my mouth, it's about six feet. That's why we six, put that. Six feet with mask, six feet, no, no mask. No, six, six feet, no math. Okay. Right? Um, and, and that's, you know, can it be 10 feet? Sure. Can it be three feet? Sure. But six feet's about on average. So that's why we were telling people to stay six feet apart from one another. And then we were saying, wear a mask. 
okay, because a mask prevents most of the stuff from coming out of your mouth and, you know, going into other people's breathing space. Yeah. Um, you know, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, can, you, can you cough around that mask? Sure. Can some of the really small particles come out around that mask? Sure. And when they do that, they aerosolize, they get in the air, they float around for a while, and quite a while, quite a while. Um, that's why we suggest that people wear the really tight N95 mask. Yeah. Um, because it, but it has to be really, really tight on your face. And quite frankly, if you have, you have a beard, it doesn't fit real tight. Mm. If, you don't, if you don't put it on your face right, it doesn't fit real tight. Okay. Um, but look, like everything else, it's, nothing's 100%. And the reason it's N95 is that it filters out 95% of the particles. Okay. That means that 5% of the particles can get through. Now, when you say get vaccinated, are you saying, for instance, Moderna or Pfizer, one, two plus boost? What does oh, get vaccinated mean right now? For, for me right now, it means to get um, um, basically three shots. Of, if you're taking the mRNA vaccine, that's the Moderna or Pfizer, or two shots if you're getting the Johnson & Johnson var variant. Um, and that's because, like many medications, they, they function a little differently. Um, but Moderna and Pfizer function pretty much the same. And we're using the term, instead of saying boosted, we're using the term kind of up to date. Because oh, okay. we don't know whether or not a year from now we'll need shots like you take a flu shot every year. Yeah. So we're telling people get up to date. Right now, up to date means three shots with Moderna or Pfizer or two shots with Johnson & Johnson. Okay, and that's, that's for everybody. If you are past the, what, it's six months? Is that every, what it is? Everybody be above the age of five. Well, and, and that's, just, that's just as of what, last week? week well, as, as a, that's, that's as of a few weeks ago. Okay. But, but the FDA is now looking at six months to five years of age. And once they do that, they will make a recommendation as to how big a dose these kids ought to get um, and how often those kids ought to get vaccinated. But they've not made that decision yet. Th those studies are, have been completed and the data is being analyzed right now. Now, you might ask yourself why birth to six months is not in that, that bucket. And that's because when you're born, you actually get antibodies from your mother. So if your mother's fully vaccinated, you're protected for about the first six months for a whole range of diseases. And then your, your immune protections begin to fall off. And, and so is that's that why if the mother is breastfeeding or not? Or do you get extended protection if you're breastfeeding? You can get um, um, some protection for many of these diseases. Um, they pass in breast milk. And I believe the, um, if a mother is vaccinated, that um, you can get some protection through the through the breast milk, but that's not you know I, I would not depend on that um, you know obviously um, um, you want to make sure that that child after six months of age gets gets vaccinated. I say that because once once it's approved, and I say that just because we know that some women breastfeed much longer than you know six months or so. Right. So. Um, how long after, if someone's gotten their first and second shots already, how long after the second shot should they get the next one? The well, the, 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 third, the, third, the third shot is um, five months right now is, is, okay. is the period of time to get that shot. And, you know, the challenge is we, we're somewhere in the 48 or 49 percent range of people that are eligible to get their boosters, that, have, that third shot, that have actually gotten that third shot. And so we okay. still want to get people to do that. And why, why are we suggesting this? Because as we've had a couple of years now to look at the disease and about a little over a year actually looking at vaccinations, as we've studied people, we've discovered that um, they get a really great protection after that first shot. It wanes over time. They get another great boost after that second shot. And then after that third shot, um, it seems to protect them a little longer. Um, okay. And it, it remains to be seen whether or not we need, we need the shot after that. But right now, that seems to be pretty good because of, it seems to protect us from all of the variants that are out there. Um, again, it does the most important thing, keep you from getting real sick and die. 
Okay. And I want to say two things. One that I forgot, guys, if you have questions, you know, I can't necessarily see the questions um, during the comments because I'm paying attention to our very expert, knowledgeable guest, but use the little question mark icon down below and I will try to at the end take as many questions as I can. Yeah. And if um, Dr. Benjamin has time for questions, he can do them too. And then second, I am very, very far away from the charger for this device. So if we drop, we will come right back on because I will go to a secondary device so that we can just I got it. doing our interview with Dr. Benjamin. But I want to just say, um, everybody, you, we, we are near the promised land. Um, so and, talk, and, you, and you've got me till about five o'clock. So we're okay. good. Till then. Okay. okay. So we got 15 more minutes at least. So help me though, because there are people who still, um, even with everything that they see, just are not interested in taking what they consider to be a risk and a chance on something unknown, which is the vaccine. What is okay. it that you say? Look, I, I, I put my head on as a doctor and I don't judge them at all. And, and what I usually tell folks is, okay, tell, me, tell me what your concern is. Tell me specifically what your concern is. And I try to address that specific concern. Um, is it, for example, do they think um, that the research was done um, too quickly? Um, is it that they simply want to wait and see, you know, um, how the rest of people who've been vaccinated do? Um, and I'm pretty clear that we've been doing this now for, you know, um, a couple of years, including the research time. And I can't tell you what's going to happen 10 years from now. Um, but I can't tell you with any medication that's new, you know, how long, you know, are we going to suddenly find something that um, we had to put additional caution on? You know, um, I was watching TV today, um, early morning, and there were several medications that they were talking about that they've now found problems with. Um, they're not, in some cases, not big problems, but over time, we learn a lot of things. We learn certain right. people can't take a particular medication. There are always people that are going to be allergic to a medication. Um, we know that. And those people, it turns out with, with, with this vaccine, we can we have some idea who they are. Um, there's a lot of people out there, they're allergic to a whole bunch of things. And we, we tell them, look, if you're concerned, go talk to your doctor about the allergy part of this. But in most cases, if you give, you've answered people's very specific questions uh, and then go, tell them, go home and think about it, they'll usually say, okay, you've, you've addressed my concern and now I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we're praying that that everybody does that because um, the best information we have is all we have. You know, I mean, and and mm -hmm. I just firmly believe that we wouldn't be watching every doctor, every nurse, uh, every president, every vice president and senator sign themselves up for a death squad. So, guys, you know, it's it's like people care about their own survival, so they would not do something themselves um, that just for it to hurt you. That's just counterintuitive to everything that belongs to especially right. citizens of the United States of America. Um, but I really I watched a, a video um, of an interview that you did. And I think it was maybe a couple of years ago. So it was right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, right before maybe the um, APHA convention. And you said something that I knew immediately and, and knew before, but was glad to hear it say out loud was true, that I think people maybe don't realize that goes to the why of us seeing so many disproportionate sicknesses and, and no. death in our community. And you said racism is a public health issue. And I know that you're absolutely right about that, but I believe that sometimes people, when they're looking at racism and they see George Floyd and they're looking at racism and they see recently, you know, communities being pillaged, like what happened with the mirror lock, or they're looking mm -hmm. at racism and they see disparate practices in banking and lending or in voting, they don't realize. No. So, you know, we're saying um, we don't realize that we're dying 
um, because of racism at, at higher rates. We're sicker yeah. longer. Uh, we are without necessary medical care because racism is a public health issue. I just wanted you to share um, yeah. with the audience about that. And, and, and the way to think about this in the context of COVID is that two things that disproportionately impact communities of color. Number one, susceptibility. Um, more heart disease, more lung disease, more chronic disease. So that means that if one gets infected, you're much more likely to get the more severe case of the disease. That's why we had, yeah. all right? The second thing is susceptibility, I mean, is, 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 the, is the fact that people are out and working in the community. So um, fortunately, I'm able to come back, go home, and work from my computer at home. But you're driving a bus, you're, you're yeah. a maintenance worker, you work in a hotel, you work in a restaurant, you don't get to do that. And disproportionately, in many, particularly urban settings, we're in those jobs, people that look like me. So exposure and susceptibility um, are, are that. And, but you think about why we're in those jobs and the lack of people being able to move up, that's because of, of structural systems that you know, have created both the health disparities as well as um, the lack of support for people in those jobs. And you may remember when this thing first happened, we were telling people for a variety of probably rational reasons, at least initially, that if you we have not drive through testing, well, if you ain't got a car, you're not going to be able to get tested. If you're not feeling well, we were also telling people, we were testing people early that weren't feeling well. Well, two buses and a train and the standing in a long line is not going to, you know, for folks that live in communities where you're, it's challenging to get, to get the health services you need. Um, and the fact that we put those testing sites not in the hood was a problem. Yeah. So, and we, by the way, we did, we did the same mistake on vaccinations. Um, they weren't not necessarily in the community. And when they were in the community, turned out that the people that were first in line were folks that had access to computers, folks that, that, that didn't have to work two shifts. Um, again, the people that had jobs in which they were not empowered, uh, who didn't have paid sick leave, and they're disproportionately communities of color. Absolutely, because even when they started um, with the testing and then with the vaccines, putting them in areas that were highly populated um, by black and brown folks, what we saw in DC until they worked to fix it was that people who lived everywhere else were going online yeah. quicker than the senior citizens could, quicker than the ones who had to work all day. <clears throat> and you were seeing lines wrapped around the block with people who did not look like us at all, who didn't come from nowhere around there because they had access to, which sometimes people don't think. Um, access to wi-fi is not a given everywhere no you no know, absolutely maybe, absolutely not you even have a hot spot like my my ipad went dead i had a phone if this phone goes dead i have another one there's wi-fi in the building that's not everywhere there are no, many I places where parents have to take their children and and park in a cvs parking lot in order to get <laughs> them to have access to wi-fi to fit to do their homework I mean, those are just realities. You know, we have kids that, that, that get on buses because they know where the hot spots are. And when they used to let them sit outside the Starbucks and, you know, in a, in the, when it was warm to do that, um, to do their homework. But you're absolutely right. That's exactly what parents have to do. And then they got to pay the, the high gas prices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and these are things that we can fix because, you know, even as we say racism is a public health issue, the fact of the matter is, I'm, I live in one of the most affluent counties, probably in the United States of America, that's in Maryland, Montgomery County. They gave a hot spot to every single child during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. They gave a Chromebook. Anybody who did not have a device got a Chromebook. Now, if one county in one state can do that, of course our federal government can get that done. Of course the states can get that done. And I don't want them fighting about 
what the states are supposed to do and what the federal government is supposed to do. But to me, that again goes back to health because it's a public health matter that these children need to go to school where they can't eat. And we call they don't those get breakfast. They don't yeah, get lunch. That's right. That's right. And we call them the social determinants for health. Those are those things that help empower you to get healthy um, or inhibit you from getting healthy. And by the way, 80% of what makes you healthy um, doesn't occur inside the doctor's office. That's a painful revelation for me to admit to, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. If and so what what is what is that 80 percent dr benjamin what's it's, what's involved it, like it, for all of us it's housing it's education um um it's um access to affordable transportation it's living in a community with a sidewalk that's walkable bikeable, and green it's safe communities it's a playground in your community where your kids can go down the street safely um and and play on the playground without you know the falling on broken glass or cutting themselves on equipment that hasn't been properly taken care of. Um, you know, it, it's a home that's not full of um, lead, lead exposure. Um, it's, um, you know, like we saw in Flint, Michigan, it's water that's safe to drink. It's not living next to a plant where, which is polluting the air. Mm -hmm. and, and all of those things. Um, and then I even think about you know, black women and and mothers and the high rate of mortality compared mm -hmm. to their counterparts in other demographics. I think about um, early onset illnesses. Uh, my, my oldest son is on the autism spectrum and he was diagnosed early, but so many black and brown boys are being diagnosed years behind yeah. their counterparts and this is all again this is it's it's not just a race issue it's race and poverty um because the the poor um are unhealthed and deal with those consequences yeah. too but i'm just wondering because i only got three minutes left with you and i thank you for sticking with me and being able people are going to be blessed by this for sure what is it that we can do? What, what can we do as individuals uh, then for our family and for our communities? Well, right now for COVID, like I said, get vaccinated. If you have any questions, please just get, get the information, okay? Um, and um, you can come to the American Public Health website, APHA.org. We can give you answers. Obviously, the Center for Disease Control website at cdc.gov can give you those answers. Get vaccinated, protect yourself, protect your family. And, you know, until we, until, well, right now, wear a mask. Very soon we can take those things off. Um, but please do that. And I just encourage you to get informed. Uh, when someone's giving you something that doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, then go look it up. Because right now we have a lot of vehicles for us to get the right information and, and, and use trusted messengers. Um, go to places that you know, go to your doctor. Go to your go to your clergy, um, you know. Talk to um, someone who's giving you good advice, a good family member. Um, but you know, most of, most of these folks that are getting misinformation, they know the information that they're getting is not quite right. Um, and and just you know, do that. I mean, there's crazy stuff out there. There are no microchips in the vaccine to track you. Why? Because they got your cell phone. They don't need a microchip here to get it. Um, you're not going to grow, grow green horns from this vaccine. Millions of doses have been given and nobody's grown horns yet. Um, it's not going to affect your nature. It's not going to make you sterile. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really one of the safest vaccines that we have so far. And, you know, all I can do is encourage people putting my doctor hat on um, um, and listen to me. But trust me, get a second opinion. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you can find the sites real, that are closest to you now if you have internet access, but even if you have to do it by phone, um, you can find sites where you can go and get your three shots or, or your two shots if it's Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. And what about public health just generally? Like what can we do in our communities in order to increase our health quotient? I, look, um, and look, I'm, I'm a guy who's had trouble maintaining a healthy weight my whole life. But physical, physical activity, 
better diet, no, no tobacco, um, limiting alcohol use, um, no, no, you know, don't, don't use the illegal substances. And if you, and if you do try to get help to, to you know, to, to stop. Um, and most importantly right now is everybody gets some me time because the mental health aspects of this is so important. The, the mental health aspects are so important. You know, people have gone off, off the rails, treating people badly, get some rest, but every day, even if it's 10 minutes, go into a, a quiet room, get some me time, you know, get away from the kids, the significant other, cloak, cut off the TV, just get some, you know, some time to, 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 to have, be quiet. And, and, um, and, and so you own, own your own self back because your mental mm-hmm. health, your mental health, it, it grates on you. And at the end of the day, your well being is, you know, fundamentally related to getting good mental health. And by the way, if you got kids, don't think your kids are not, not seeing what's happening. Don't think they're not listening to what's happening. Give them kids a hug today because they need it. Yeah, they really, they absolutely have, have been through it. Well, I thank you so much for all of that advice. And guys, if you're on here right now, um, or if you're watching this, there's free sound baths on, on Instagram. If you want to just kind of zen out, there's meditations, there's prayer rooms, there's all kind of things where you can just get some tips and some tools and steal away. I think that is like the most fundamental advice. You'd be surprised what 10 minutes can do. I'm going to get me a 10 minutes before this day is over myself um but thank you thank you thank you um dr benjamin just for for all the work that you do but also for taking the time uh, to share with us and and we are praying for your strength and your stamina as you continue to do all that you do to help keep the public healthy Um, And I want you guys to go and look up his organization if you need information. I think it's APHA.org. Is that correct? That's correct. So, yeah. 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 American Public Health Association. It's APHA.org. So go there. There's lots of information that you can use on there. I went and looked at the site myself today. So, okay, everybody. Doing our best. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You take care. And anytime, we'll, we're we'll happy to come back. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.